Welcome to IQ Central. In this video, we will be discussing the cover and cover test and alternate cover test in detail. We will start with the basics. So, squint can be classified into two types. There is heterotropia or simply tropia, and then there is heterophoria or simply phoria. Heterotropia refers to a manifest squint. Manifest means something that is clearly visible, something that is obvious to the eye. For example, this patient walks into your OPD and you see that his right eye is deviated outwards. This is a squint that is clearly visible to us. It is not hidden from us. We don't have to go searching for it. So, this is what we call a manifest squint or a tropia. Now, suppose another patient walks into your OPD. He complains of squinting of the eyes, but his eyes appear straight to you. On first impression, it may seem like this person does not have any squint. But after you do certain tests, you realize that this patient does have a squint which was hidden from you initially, but it is now revealed to you by those tests. Then we say that this patient has a phoria or a latent squint. So we can say that phoria is a type of hidden squint. In reality, latent squint is kept hidden from us because of fusion which means that the patient is able to maintain ocular alignment because he has fusion. But once the fusion gets broken by doing certain tests or during physical or mental fatigue, he is not able to maintain straight eyes anymore and he develops squint. We will understand this in more detail later. Now let's begin our discussion on cover tests. First of all, how do we prepare for these tests? We need a fixation target for both distance as well as for near. For distance, we use the Snellen's chart. If the patient's vision is 6 by 6 in both eyes, we ask him to fixate on the 6 by 9 line. Suppose his vision is 6 by 9 in one eye and 6 by 18 in the other eye, we ask him to fixate on the 6 by 24 line. So basically, he should be able to fixate on a line with both eyes comfortably and we choose the line which is one step larger than the vision in his worst eye. For near, we prefer to use an accommodative target, like we can use fixation cubes or fixation sticks, especially while examining children. Otherwise, we can use the tip of a pen or even a torchlight. Near testing is done from a distance of 33 cm from the patient. Then we need an occluder. We can use an opaque black occluder or we can use a translucent occluder, which is known as the Spielmann's occluder or we can just use our palm to occlude the eye. Cover tests are done with the patient's best refractive correction in place, which means that he should be wearing his latest correct power of glasses unless we want to specifically check his ocular alignment without his glasses. If the patient has an abnormal head posture, we must correct the head posture and bring the head to a straight position before performing the cover tests. Also, cover tests must be done in all nine cardinal positions of gaze for both distance as well as for near. So, first we will discuss the cover and cover test. Let us understand this with the help of an example. So, this is our patient. We want to check whether this patient has any squint or not. We look at him carefully and we notice that his left eye is deviated a little outwards. We suspect that he has left eye exotropia. This is looking like a manifest squint to us and we want to confirm whether our suspicion is correct or not. So to confirm a manifest squint, we do a cover uncover test. Cover uncover test is done in two steps. In the first step, we cover the eye and in the second step, we uncover the eye. Which eye do we cover and what do we check? So, we cover the apparently normal eye or we can say the apparently non-deviating eye or the apparently fixating eye. All of these mean the same. What we mean by an apparently normal eye is that it seems to us that in this case, the right eye is the normal eye. The right eye is straight, the patient is fixating with his right eye and left eye is the eye with squint. Whether we are correct or not, that the cover test will tell us. So, we ask the patient to fixate on the Snellen's chart and in the first step of cover and cover test, we cover his right eye 
which we believe is the normal eye. Now, what happens when we cover this eye? We observe if the uncovered eye, which means the eye which is deviated, means in this case the left eye, we observe if the left eye makes any movement or not. So, on covering the right eye, we notice that the left eye moves inwards. And now the patient is looking at the chart with his left eye. The left eye has become the fixating eye. Now, since the left eye has moved to a central position now, it means that it must be deviated previously and that is why it has now moved to come to the primary position, which means that the left eye really had a squint and our suspicion was correct. This left eye had a manifest squint and since the eye has moved from out to in, it means that it was deviated outwards initially and this patient had an exotropia or a divergent squint. Let us understand this with another example. This is our patient. Looking at this patient, I suspect that he has a right eye esotropia, means the right eye is deviated inwards. Since I believe that I can see the squint, it is clearly obvious to me, I suspect that this is a case of right eye manifest squint, a tropia. Now, I wish to confirm that this patient has right eye esotropia, so what do I do? I perform the cover test. I cover this patient's apparently normal eye. In this case, since the right eye has esotropia or convergent squint, I would believe that his left eye is the normal eye. The patient is fixating with his left eye, so I take my occluder and cover his left eye. Now what happens? I have covered the fixating eye, so he cannot fixate with his left eye anymore because its vision is blocked by the occluder. So what will the patient do? He will fixate with the eye that is not blocked, which means the right eye. And to fixate with it, the eye has to come into the primary position, so the eye will move out to take fixation. And this movement of the eye confirms that the eye was deviated initially and the direction of movement confirms that it was deviated inwards. That is why it has moved outwards to come into the central position. So this patient has a right eye esotropia. If the deviated eye moves from out to in, that is from the temporal to the nasal direction, then it is an exotropia. If it moves from nasal to temporal direction, then it is an esotropia. If it comes from up to down on cover test, it is a hypertropia. Like in this case, where this patient has a left eye hypertropia, and if it moves from down to up, then the eye has a hypotropia. This is left eye hypotropia. You can see the eye move up when the right eye is covered. Now the question that comes to mind is, why do we want to do this test? I can clearly see that this patient has a squint. Is my observation not enough? Well, sometimes you can be wrong, especially in cases of pseudostrabismus. Pseudo means false. So these are cases where it looks like the eyes are misaligned, but in reality there is no squint. There are many conditions that may cause pseudostrabismus and that can be a separate video altogether. But here we will take a very common example of babies. They may have a flat nasal bridge or they may have epicanthal folds which give a false impression of esotropia, means that their eyes are converged when in reality they are not. It is in fact a pseudoesotropia. So suppose this is our patient. We suspect that he has right eye esotropia. So what do we do to confirm our diagnosis? We do cover test and we cover the apparently fixating eye, that is the left eye, and we observe the movement of the right eye. But the right eye does not move. It does not move because it was already in the straight position. It was because of his prominent epicanthal folds that it appeared as if this patient had a squint in his right eye, but with cover testing, it is now confirmed that there was no squint. It was a case of pseudoesotropia. Another condition in which cover test is very useful is in small angle deviations. So we look at this patient. His eyes are appearing straight to us. There is no squint. But he is complaining of diplopia or double vision. Now if I cover his right eye, 
and observe the left eye there is no movement next i cover his left eye and i see that the right eye has moved in the downward direction this means that his right eye was deviated in the upward direction means he had a right eye hypertrophia which has been diagnosed by doing the cover test let us take another example this is our patient it does not look like this person has a squint but i am doing his squint examination as part of complete ophthalmic examination if i want to check whether this patient has manifest squint in his left eye i occlude his right eye so there is no movement in the left eye which means that the left eye does not have squint now i will occlude his left eye to check for any manifest squint in his right eye so again the right eye does not move at all which means that there is no manifest squint in his right eye either so this patient has normal ocular alignment he is orthotropic another scenario is when you are sure that your patient has a squint but cover test does not show any squint one example would be of course a pseudostrabismus that we have already discussed but in this case there is no pseudostrabismus you are absolutely sure about it this is the alignment of a patient you are sure that he has a left eye exotropia nothing will change your mind you want to perform cover test to confirm your diagnosis you cover his right eye but what happens the left eye does not move at all does that mean that this patient does not have any squint what is happening in this case so it could mean many different things first the patient could have poor vision in this eye he has such a poor vision in this eye that he cannot see the snellens chart where he is supposed to fixate since he cannot see the snellens chart with his left eye how would he take fixation with this eye and since he cannot take fixation with this eye why would this eye move at all so before performing cover test you must check your patient's visual acuity and make sure that it is at least 6 by 60 in both eyes now suppose you have taken your patient's vision and in the right eye it was 6 by 6 and in the deviated eye that is the left eye it was 6 by 24 you want to confirm that this patient has left eye exotropia so you cover his right eye again the left eye does not move why now the vision is relatively good he can see the chart then why is the left eye not moving to the center it could be because your patient has eccentric fixation eccentric fixation is when the patient fixates from a point other than the fovea in a normal fixating behavior the image forms on the fovea of the eye and this is known as central fixation but in eccentric fixation he fixates from an extra foveal point and that is why when he tries to fixate with that eye his eye is deviated because he wants the image to form on the extra foveal point on his retina and not on the fovea so before performing cover test make sure that your patient does not have eccentric fixation another situation your patient has good vision in both eyes say 6 by 9 6 by 12 central fixation in both eyes yet when you do cover test the eye does not move it could be because there is gross restriction of extraocular movements maybe this patient has an inferior division third nerve palsy and his eye cannot move to the midline because his medial rectus muscle is not working or maybe it is a case of a long standing contracture of lateral rectus muscle the lateral rectus has become so tight and so contracted that it is not allowing the eye to move towards the midline so the third thing that you need to check before performing cover test is that there is no gross or severe restriction of extraocular movements these three points that we have discussed just now are the three prerequisites that need to be ensured before performing cover test first the patient should have good visual acuity that is at least 6 by 16 in both eyes second the patient should have central fixation in both eyes and third there should be no gross restriction of extraocular movements there is one more mistake that is commonly made by students during squint examination what they do is that they cover the wrong eye you have to be very clear about which eye is to be covered during this test suppose this is a patient you suspect that he has a right eye esotropia and by mistake you cover the right eye now what will happen there will be no movement in the left eye why because the patient was originally fixating with his left eye 
and after covering the right eye he will continue to fixate with his left eye there will be no change in his fixation behavior and you will falsely believe that he does not have any squint that is why in all cases you should perform cover test on both the eyes now when i cover the left eye the right eye moves out to take fixation so this confirms a manifest squint in the right eye which is right eye esotropia suppose i close this patient's right eye what do i see the left eye moves up which means that the left eye was hypotropic i remove the cover and now i cover his left eye what happens the right eye does not move so this patient has a left eye hypotropia so this was about the cover part of cover and cover test now we will discuss the second step which is the uncover test let us go back to our first example this is our patient and we suspect that he has a left eye exotropia we perform the first step that is we cover the right eye the left eye moves in to take fixation and this confirms a manifest squint in the left eye he has a left eye exotropia now we remove the occluder from the right eye which means that we are uncovering the right eye and now we observe the behavior of the eye which was under the cover that is the right eye what happens to the right eye when we uncover it now there can be many possibilities and we will discuss all of them one by one first is that as soon as we uncover the right eye the right eye immediately moves in to take fixation and the left eye goes back to its previously deviated position but why does the right eye move when it was already in the center it did not have any squint then why is it moving now we can understand this if we use a translucent occluder which will help us in observing the behavior of the eye which was under the cover now when we cover the right eye the left eye takes up fixation and moves inwards the muscle which acts to bring the eye inwards is the left eye medial rectus now the yoke muscle of the left eye medial rectus is right eye lateral rectus so because of herring's law of equal innervation when the left medial rectus gets stimulated equal innervation goes to its yoke muscle that is the right eye lateral rectus both eyes move in the same direction left medial rectus contracts to move the left eye inwards and right lateral rectus contracts to move the right eye outwards and that is what happens under the cover the right eye moves outwards means it gets exodeviated so at this moment the left eye is the fixating eye while the right eye is the deviating eye now when we remove this cover the right eye returns to its original primary position while the left eye goes back to its original position of exotropia this will happen if the right eye is the dominant eye of the patient he may have better visual acuity in his right eye or the left eye may be amblyopic second situation is that when we remove the cover from the right eye the right eye continues to stay in the deviated position this means that when we covered the right eye the patient assumed fixation with his left eye but even after uncovering the right eye the patient is continuing to fixate with his left eye this means that the patient has equal vision in both eyes he can maintain fixation with both eyes equally both eyes are equally dominant and this is an alternating squint or an alternating exotropia in this case so there is a grading system that we follow to describe this fixation behavior of the eye grade 0 is the second situation that we just discussed the patient maintains fixation with both eyes and has no fixation preference he has an alternating squint grade 1 is mild fixation preference when the patient maintains fixation with the deviated eye for more than 3 seconds but then loses it on blinking so we remove the cover from the right eye our patient continues to maintain fixation with the left eye that had squint but once he blinks the fixation preference changes to the right eye grade 2 is when we remove cover from the right eye the patient maintains fixation with his deviating eye that is the left eye for just about 1 to 3 seconds and then he switches fixation to his right eye which was originally fixating grade 3 is strong fixation preference which was the first situation that as soon as the cover is removed 
the patient immediately switches fixation to the right eye. Means he has a strong fixation preference for the right eye and he is not holding fixation with the left eye at all. So, how will you document this? This case is left eye exotropia, left eye not holding fixation. This is left eye exotropia, left eye holding fixation for less than 3 seconds. This is left eye exotropia, left eye loses fixation with the blink. And left eye exotropia, left eye maintains fixation. So, this is the grading system that we follow at our clinic. As far as I remember, it was not given in any of the books, but something along similar lines is known as zip grading of binocular fixation pattern. Again, you will not find it in your books, so don't mention it in your exams. But you can obviously describe the fixation behavior in the way that I just told you. So, coming back to cover-uncover test, what are the different characteristics of squint that we can determine by performing this test? First, it confirms the presence of a manifest squint. It tells us the direction of squint. It helps us in ruling out a pseudostrabismus. It can diagnose small angle deviations that can otherwise be missed on Hirschberg test. It can tell us about the fixation behavior of both eyes. Cover and cover test also helps us in diagnosing incompetent squints. Incompetent squint is a squint that is different in different positions of gaze. For example, a six nerve palsy. Suppose this patient has a left sided six nerve palsy. The muscle supplied by the six nerve is the lateral rectus muscle. The function of lateral rectus is abduction, which means that it pulls the eye in the outward direction. Now, in six nerve palsy, the lateral rectus muscle is affected. It is underacting. So, its antagonist, which is the left medial rectus, will have no opposition and it will pull the eye nasally and this patient will have a left eye esotropia. We do Hirschberg test, say it is 15 degrees. We put a prism in front of this eye and we measure the deviation and it comes out to be about 30 prism diopters. Since right eye is the apparently fixing eye, we do the cover test by occluding the right eye. The left eye moves out to take fixation. Now, when we remove the cover from the right eye and check the Hirschberg test again, while the patient is fixating with the left eye, which is the affected eye, we notice that the Hirschberg comes out to be 30 degrees. We measure the deviation in this patient and it comes out to be 65 prism diopters. So, the deviation when the patient was fixing with the normal eye which is known as the primary deviation was 30 prism diopters, while the deviation when he was fixating with his pulsy eye, which is known as secondary deviation, was 65 prism diopters, which means that the secondary deviation was more than the primary deviation, and this is diagnostic of a paralytic squint. So, cover test gives us information about primary deviation and secondary deviation. Suppose this was a case of an acute concomitant esotropia. Acute concomitant esotropia is an acute onset esotropia which is equal in all positions of gaze. So, in that case, the primary deviation would have been equal to a secondary deviation. Thus, cover test helps us in differentiating a concomitant squint from an incomitant squint. Now, let's consider this patient. He complains of squinting of the eyes. You look at him, it does not look like he has any squint. You do Hirschberg test, it is central in both eyes. You check his extraocular movements, they are full and free in all directions. Then you perform the cover test. You cover the right eye, there is no movement in the left eye. Then you cover the left eye, there is no movement in the right eye, which means that there is no manifest squint in either the right eye or the left eye. Now, what is your next step? Your next step would be to find out if the patient has a latent squint. I told you in the beginning of this video that latent squint refers to a hidden squint. It is not obvious to the observer, but once we break the fusion, it gets revealed. The other name of latent squint is phoria. And to reveal a phoria, we do alternate cover test. It is also known as cross cover test. So, how do we perform an alternate cover test in this patient? We start by covering one eye. Which eye do we cover? Now, since both eyes are straight, 
we can cover either eye it does not matter you can start by covering the right eye or the left eye it is your wish what we do is we cover one eye for 3 seconds and then we quickly move the cover to the opposite eye for 3 seconds and we keep switching back and forth from right eye to the left eye and then from left eye to the right eye and so on this breaks fusion and the eyes start showing movement for example here first i cover the patient's right eye then i move the cover to the left eye and while doing this i have to observe the movement of the eye which was uncovered that is the right eye i see that it is moving from out to in to gain fixation this means that the eye which was straight before we covered it got deviated outwards when it was covered now i move the cover from the left eye to the right eye so i observe the movement of the left eye which was under cover the left eye moves from out to in to take fixation so what we have uncovered in this case is an exophoria if the eyes were moving in to out on alternate cover testing like this it would be an esophoria we have to remember that the switching of the cover should be quick because we don't want the eyes to regain binocularity now suppose we do alternate cover test in our patient with exophoria we have broken his fusion and then we pause for a while and now we perform the cover test in this patient we close his right eye and the left eye moves from out to in earlier this eye showed no movement on cover test but now it is showing a movement that is seen in cases of exotropia so this means that by breaking his fusion we have converted his phoria into a tropia means his hidden squint has now become a manifest squint and this condition is known as intermittent exotropia intermittent means something that is not constant it occurs sometimes sometimes it is not seen so intermittent exotropia is a type of intermittent deviation that occurs when the patient's fusion breaks down either due to mental or physical fatigue or it breaks down during alternate cover testing intermittent exotropia is a huge topic on its own if you want me to make a video on it separately please let me know in the comment section below so what we have learned so far is that cover and cover test is done for tropia or manifest squint and alternate cover test is done for phoria or latent squint is there any other information that you can get on cover testing this patient complains of squinting of the eyes you do hirschberg test he is ortho his extraocular movements are full you cover the right eye there is no movement in the left eye you uncover the right eye and on uncovering the right eye you notice that the right eye is slowly coming down there is no movement in the left eye is this a case of right eye hypertropia to check if the patient has a right eye hypertropia you cover the patient's left eye and you notice that the right eye is not making any movement also if it was a right eye hypertropia you would have seen the left eye move from up to down because of herring's law of equal innervation but that movement is not happening in this case we call this a dissociated movement which means that the movement is occurring independent of the movement in the fellow eye the name of this type of slow dissociated movement is dvd or dissociated vertical deviation we can have dvd in one eye like this or we can have bilateral dvd like this last scenario this is our patient i am performing cover and cover test in this patient to look for a manifest deviation i close his right eye and on closing the right eye i notice that the left eye starts showing some rapid involuntary jerky movements which were not present earlier this is nystagmus and this type of nystagmus is known as latent nystagmus so by covering one eye we can also reveal a latent nystagmus so this was all about cover and cover and alternate cover test if you want me to cover more topics on squint do let me know in the comment section below please share this video with your friends and colleagues if you found it useful and please subscribe to my channel to support free education thank you very much